speaking and, and saying there's going to be a move of God like we had when we were teenagers. And I agree with you, Brother Joey. I, I believe when he's speaking that to, to uh, Brother Caleb. And, and I do believe that. I believe God is positioning us for another outpouring uh, that we've never seen. Can I share with you, and I've talked to uh, some pastors this, this week um, and some guys that go to some different churches around here, and, and, and they are absolutely blown away the number of people they see around here. People are noticing what's going on around here. Uh, I was up the street this afternoon talking with Tom Newell, and uh, he said, I came by this church, and it looked like you had a full house at their church. We had, you know, of course, we had 70 kids up there, and I told him, and he said, you got to be kidding me. And his, and his oldest son, Ethan, was there, and Ethan said, that's more people than, that's more youth than anybody else in town has. Amen. And I said, well, you great but we need to make sure that we maintain them and increase them uh, we can't do status quo and uh, so we must maintain them we must, we must increase them uh, I'm going to talk to you for just a little bit about helping and just uh, what Jesus asked the disciples to do I'll talk to you for just a little bit I'm, I'm not going to scream it and preach it like it deserves to be screamed and preached but I'm going to talk to you for just a little bit about Doing what Jesus did and discipling people to do greater and to do more. Uh, our church has been very blessed over the years, years and years and years, to have uh, people who have always been willing to help. However, uh, we've always allowed those people to help in every area possible. And so they do everything kind of good, but they don't do anything with excellence because there's not any time. That's not a slight to anybody, but you guys know what I'm talking about. If you were, had any talent whatsoever, if you had any ability to speak whatsoever, you were a preacher. If you had any ability to sing, you were a singer. If you had any, any ability to uh, play an instrument, you were a, you were a musician. And, and, and that's what you, and if you had, you know, if you didn't kill kids, you were a youth worker. And, and that's just how it was. You know, if you could go home with, without having a migraine headache on Wednesday night, hey, you're our new youth leader, you know? And so, uh, so just bear with me for just a minute. But we have a, a few examples from what God would say in Luke chapter 5, verse 27 through 31. Luke chapter 5, verse 27 through 31. That would be in the New Testament. Just after Mark. I talked with uh, Brother Sherlock Ballet today. He sends greetings and tell you that he loves you and just wanted to touch base today. He just wanted to tell you how much he appreciates you being here and how much he appreciates your families and, and the church. Uh, he will be back in October uh, around this area. Uh, he'll, he's, I know he's uh, going out to Highway Baptist again. He's going to Meeker to preach uh, a couple of services. I don't know yet about First Baptist. They wanted him. Uh, we don't know. And I think that'd be awesome. Thing. Oh, yeah. I just think it would be awesome. I mean, I do. I just think I, I want to go watch just to see how he's going to take care of it. But <laughs> I do. I just want to see how I want to sit in the back and just be a fly on the wall and just watch. Because he acts like he does here, man. That'll freak some people out. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying that's how it is. All right. After these things, he went forth and saw a publican. What's a publican? Tax, okay, tax collector. And he worked for the IRS. Named Levi. Who's Levi? Who is Levi? Is it Matthew? Is it Matthew? Okay. <laughs> I was, I was out there. I was, when nobody said it, I thought I was wrong. But I think it's, I believe it's Matthew. A city of the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. He said unto him, follow me. And verse 28 says, And he left to all, rose up, and followed him. Verse 29, And Levi made him a great feast in his own house, and there was great company of publicans and others that sat down with him. Verse 30, But their but scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And one of the greatest verses in the Bible, Jesus says, He said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. So let's go on to John chapter 1, verse 43 through 44. <coughs> John 
John 1, 43 through 44. I'm sorry, I meant to give this to you, and I, I apologize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry, training. Thank you. You're fine. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find a Philip. Who is Philip? Philip. Okay. And say unto him, <laughs> follow me. That was a trick question. I'm sorry. That was me. Verse 44. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Jesus, in verse 3, 43, says what? Go back to 43. Thank you. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Follow me. John 10, 27. And then we'll go to John 12, 26. John 10, 27. And John 12, 26. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, they that follow, and, and I'm sorry. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John 12, 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall, there shall also be my beast. Hang on. Lord have mercy. If any man say, serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. I read all these. I was going to preach this five-point scream and holler service session. But I read all this, and I think God has changed it for a reason. I want you to think about this. I'm asking you for your help. I'm not asking you to tell me what to do. I'm asking you to help me. I'm asking you to follow Jesus. I'm asking you to follow after what God would have you to do, which is make disciples. Brother Dean, look up this verse. It just came to me. Uh, and he went out making disciples. And look that up. The reason I asked Brother Dean is because God was at his pad open and it's ready. But I'm asking you to help me. I'm asking you to follow Jesus and follow me as I follow Jesus, as Paul said. Now, I'm not asking you to walk off the cliff like a bunch of lemmings. But as, I, as we follow Christ, follow us. I'm asking you to help us. I'm asking you, if, if maybe... You're not part of the circle of the three, but you can still be part of the nine and not be mad that you're not part of the three. Amen. Amen. That's right. Can I ask you to be part of the 120 in the upper room? Yes. Can I ask you to be the, part of the 3,000 that were saved Amen. and not be mad because you're not the sons of thunder? <laughs> Peter, James, and John, the sons of thunder. Can I ask you to please understand what I'm asking you? Is that there's a world out there that's lost and dying, and there's a there's a there's a city out there that needs a church that will just absolutely preach the truth. And listen, I believe holiness is going to come back in style. Amen. Because everybody's tired, I think, of church as normal. Church is regular. George, I just go to church for 45 minutes on a, on a Monday or on a Sunday, and I'm good for the rest of the week. You know what? You, that ain't enough food for a spirit to keep you alive for a day. I don't care what anybody says, and I, I know I'm an old relic. And Listen, I was born into a family. My parents were born in the 30s. And, and so I was, a, I was a late child. And I don't know. But I know that God had a plan for me. I wasn't raised by hippy dippy by hippy dippy parents. I was raised by parents that fire you up and not think twice about it. I was I was I was raised by parents who you were respectful to people. I didn't say I was always respectful. I said I was raised to be respectful. 
I was not always a perfect child. Amen. But I was rest. Amen. That's right. And some of y'all know. I was not. I, I don't come up here and act like I was Mr. Wonderful and I never did anything wrong. But I was raised by parents who taught me respect for people. Yes. Respect for elders. Yes. Respect for myself. Yes. I, was, I was taught by my parents to fear God. Not to be afraid of God, but to fear God. I was taught... I was taught to live so that my light so shined. And if my light did not so shine, to not act like I was living like my light was so shining. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you catch my drift. Yeah. I was taught... and I was, Listen, we were taught in our church that... If you were sinning, and I'm not saying everything we got taught was right, but this was right. And if you were sinning, and you didn't try to hold a position because you had more respect for God because you were afraid, I would strike you dead. Like Ananias and Sapphira. Does anybody remember that? But not everything we were taught was right, but, but that I think is pretty dead on. We were taught to respect the house of God. We didn't take stuff out of the house of God. I know we were borrowing it, but it never comes back. That is like borrowing from Walmart and going to jail. And so, we didn't take stuff out of the house of the Lord. We didn't bring our junk. Amen. I said all that to say this. We brought the best we had. We did the best we could do. We loved God with all of our heart. I was raised by parents, and that's what that's what I was taught. I wasn't taught uh, that church owes me something. I was taught I owe God something, and I better be at the church doing something. Amen. That's how I was taught. I didn't say everything I was taught was right, but I think that's pretty right. The church don't owe me a thing, but I owe God everything. Amen. And so that's how I was taught. I was raised up that... This was a holy, holy place. And the men of God who were, who were here, the women of God who were here, were to be respected and to, and to be loved and to be cherished. And But, can I get my butt in the way? <laughs> but they, not that, not that they were perfect. I don't put them in a pedestal and say they were saints or whatever. But they lived a life that could be respected. That's right. And could be cherished. They lived a life not just in the church house, but they lived it outside of the world. Now listen, I just said they did everything right because they didn't. Because they're human beings and they messed up, they fell short. And they did all these things. And they, they did, they did, you know, they talk about people they should have been talking and stuff like that. But I'm telling you, they lived a life that was respected by the people in the church. And it wasn't just simply because they would come up and, and preach a good sermon on Sunday. It was because they lived it every day of their lives and they tried to do their very best. And they prayed and they sought God and they fasted meals and they did everything that they knew to do to be close to God. And that's why we had men, men and women who had wisdom and power and anointing in their lives. Well, what does that have to do with helping? I'm getting there. I'm trying to hurry. Because when I ask you for help, Everybody's always volunteers. And that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. But when I ask you for help, I'm talking about help with somebody who has a lifestyle. Oh, see, I'm just going to get That I can say they deserve honor. They deserve to be cherished. Can you follow me as I follow Christ? I hope so. But can you follow the leadership as they follow Christ? See, you want to you want people to follow you, but you won't be mad every day. You won't be nasty to people. I know it's gonna get quiet. People want to be nasty to people, then say, well, Won't you come to my church? People won't get on Facebook and cuss everybody out and put how good Jesus is. Yeah. What does it matter with you? Amen. 
I just assume you're not put Jesus in it. Glory. See, because what you put on Facebook is really what's in your spirit because there ain't nobody watching. So when you throw it out there, baby, you can't take it back. Oh, my life stinks. Everybody hates me. I hate everybody and everybody hates me. But the Lord is good. All 316, John. For God so loved the world. And you put the rainbow on the thing. What does it matter with us? Have we lost every good sense that God gave a goat? I mean, it just drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. That's why I don't get on it. Because it makes me mad. So I guess I'll just, I'll just soon not be mad. Amen. I'll just soon be off of it. Now, I post every now and then, but I don't read everything. If you message me on Facebook, you know this. Because it might be two days before I message you back. Because I don't look. And I apologize for that. I try to be good. And I try to check and make sure messages come, whatever. But I don't, I'm not real good about messaging. So, <coughs> so I have to follow me. Unfollow, yeah. <laughs> I haven't unfollowed anybody because I don't know how to do that. So, okay. <laughs> but here. Hear me. I'm asking you for something. I ask you Sunday, are you ready for this? Are you ready to be the major move of God in the city? Everybody amens that. I'm asking you something big here. I'm not asking for the, oh, yes, Lord. Help me, Jesus. I'm asking you for something real. Are you really ready to be the lead in a move of God. Yes. Well, how do you do that, Brother Jeff? I'm telling you how you do that. By having a life that is raised up before God and holy. I'm not talking about your sleeve length. I'm talking about, I'm talking about your life. Is it righteous? Is it holy? Is it acceptable unto God? Do you hold yourself to a higher standard? Do you hold yourself to a standard at all? Just because it's okay for the government to do it doesn't mean it's okay for me to do it. Do you hold yourself to a higher standard? Do you refuse to get caught up in what the world's doing and do what God's asking you to do? Go back to my first verse. My original verse is Luke 5.27. Luke 5.27. My original verse was this. <coughs> Jesus, thank you. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. The least likely person. Verse 28. And he left all, who left all? Levi. Left everything he had, rose up, and followed him. Verse 29. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with him. Hear me. When I said a while ago, don't ever go to God and not have something. I don't care if it's just a hallelujah. I don't care if it's just a praise. You can offer God something that's going to cost you something. Levi made him a great feast in his own house. So Levi made Jesus a great feast in Levi's own house. And there was a great company of IRS agents and others that sat down with them. Verse 30. But their, but their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and and sinners. Time out for just a second. This is my original verses, and I want to say this is where I'm going to quit. Here's what I want to share with you. When Jesus calls us to follow him, Jesus understands that we're not the most likely. We're probably not the, the most educated, the most well-groomed. But he wants us to follow him so he can disciple us in the way He wants us to be. 
Not the way the scribes and the Pharisees want to be, but the way that Jesus wants us to be. What are you talking about, Brother Jeff? This is what I'm talking about. Had he chosen a scribe or a Pharisee, there may have been a meal, but the, the sinners would not have been able to go. There might not have even been a meal. Because they may have been working too much on the Sabbath or something. But hear me just a second. But the scribes and the Pharisees, the, the church people, murmured against the disciples saying, Why do you eat with publicans and sinners? Verse 31. Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole don't need a physician, but those that are sick. Can I share with you, this is the last thing I'm going to share, and I'm going to shut up and get out of here. The church as a whole has forgotten the call of God. We chase after homes, we chase after boats and cars and multi-million dollar whatever it is. We ask God for everything under the sun but souls. Amen. I look at the young people that are in the back tonight and I see that hollow look in their eyes because there's nothing, there's no love at home. And it breaks my heart. There are young people around here that have nothing. Nothing. And it breaks my heart. We have got to show a better way to another generation to expect the government to bail them out. I live in the poorest part of Oklahoma, just about. We do. Look at the map. Google it up. See where the poverty rate is. See where the unemployment rate is. See, look. See where it is you live. There's some places that are worse than us in southeastern Oklahoma, but we're not high, we're not low, we're out in the middle of, of the poverty of Oklahoma. And we've got to show a generation that there's a better way to live than waiting for a government who doesn't have any feelings for them, who doesn't love them, who doesn't care for them, who doesn't, they could care less than they live or die. Waiting for them to bail them out instead of having a God who loves them, cherishes them, cares for them, and showing them that God can love them. But listen, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. We've been conditioned that money is what we're looking for. Huh? No. Money, the Bible does say, solves all things. That's what it says. I didn't write it. That's what it says. Hear me. But, I believe it was Franklin Roosevelt who wrote, who said, when you give men money for doing nothing, you take their soul. Because he understood that we weren't designed to do that. So that's what I say, I need your help. I, need, I desire you to help me to win a generation. To change their philosophy. And it's not going to be easy because at home, they're not going to get what you're going to give them at church. But, I, but if we can get somebody to understand that God is, your, God is your source, not the United States government. But God is your source. And if you'll do what God says, God will prosper you. I want to, I'm, going to, I'm going to close with this and I want you to think about this. How many have ever been by government housing? Okay. How many have ever been by a house where somebody was prosperous on their own? Where would you rather live? I'm prosperous on my own, but through the help of God. Where would you rather live? Are you, so you're talking down to people? No, no, sir, no, no, sir, no, ma'am. I'm not talking down to you at all. What I'm saying is, is we've lost our focus. We've lost the focus of what the church really is supposed to be about. The church is supposed to be about helping and doing and, and doing greater. I love my church because we feed people.
people. We clothe people. We help people as best we can. Listen, I'm not giving people money because I it may not end up where it's supposed to be going. But I'll feed you. I'll clothe you. I'll do whatever I can to help you. I'll visit you in the hospital. I'll do whatever I can. I'll pray for you and your family. I'll teach you how to live for God. I'll teach you how to give for God. Give to God and let God bless you. I'll teach you how to do that. See, when you say that, people automatically back up. You're just trying to get money from me. I don't need your money. Amen. But you need God's help. Amen. And you need God's provision. Amen. So what does that mean, Brother Jeff? This is what it means. To get your, get your life lined up with God's word. Quit sinning and asking God to bless you. A relationship, a sexual relationship. Quit doing it if you're not married to that person. Amen. Well, I just don't understand why I'm not blessed. Well, that's not hard to figure out, baby. Amen. <laughs> Quit. If you're doing it, stop it. Now. Or else you'll always suffer. Well, we can't afford to get married because I'll cut off our check. That's the new thing. They won't be, listen, I, I got asked to marry somebody without a marriage license so they wouldn't lose their checks. I say, you have lost your mind. Amen. No. No. Won't do it. I won't participate in your sin. I won't, I won't give you an amen so you can continue to sin. How about this? Quit, quit doing those things. And let's, and let's find out if God will truly bless us or not. Listen, you're already in trouble. Well, why not give God a shot? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I tried the Lord. If you don't try the Lord, you do it. Amen. Even when there's nothing in the meal barrel, even when there's nothing in the, in the oil, there's no, no oil left in the cruise, you still trust God and say, I'm going to make a little cake and I'm going to die. And God will come by. I promise you, He'll come by. But you've got to have a you got to have a like you want to live and do what you want to do and expect God to bless you, that's a lie from hell. Amen. I don't know when we ever thought that or why we came up with that. I know I'm trying to quit and quit looking at me. <laughs> I know that, listen, I grew up in this, listen, I grew up in a time, I grew up in a time when you didn't sin and expect God to bless you, but now we, and then we act like it's God, God owes us a blessing. God don't owe me nothing. Amen. He blessed me. He saved my soul. He's done nothing else for me. I'm already ahead. And he said, listen, he's done, he, he doesn't owe me a thing. Amen. But for me to follow after him. And I know I'm off subject. I don't know why I'm off subject, but I am. But can I share with you? Follow after Jesus. All he was doing is, would you help me? change the world. Will you help me change the world? Will you help me change the world? So I'm asking you, will you help me change the world? And I, I just want to, I, I want you to pray about it. Don't give me an answer tonight. I want you to pray and seek God about what God would have you do. Because I have some applications that I want you to fill out because I want to know who wants to be involved. We did this like three years ago. Just because you fill an application doesn't mean you're going to get a job. Just like outside the workforce. Just, oh, I feel that application. Don't I work here? No. No. But don't, but don't take that as a slight towards you. There just may be somebody else that God has called for that. So there's nothing wrong with saying, I'm going to work with them. I'm going to do what they're doing. I'm going to be involved. I'm going to get involved in Remnant. I'm going to get involved in the next step. I'm going to get involved in the next ministry. I'm going to get involved. I'm going to get involved. Instead of saying, well, they won't let me do nothing. That's a lie of the devil. Get involved. We need you. I need you. I need you to help me. I need you to, I need you to get involved with the things of God. I need you to understand. <coughs> I don't know if you guys really still get my heart or not, but my heart is not for buildings, buildings. And that's not my I, I hate this process. I just hate it. Because it's so slow. And we need money. And I told Cody today, I'm sick of being bound by how much money I have or what ministry I can do. 
I'm sick of it. I'm sick. Listen, God owns it all. Then why am I bound by how much money we got in the bank? It just drives me nuts. I shouldn't be bound by how much, how many thousands of dollars we have in the bank or don't have. It bothers me. Because God has called us to win and change the world. And if He's called us to do that, I just can I just share this and I'll leave you alone. God is waiting for us to get ready because He's always ready. He's waiting for some people to line up according to the Word of God. And maybe He's waiting on me. But I'm doing my very best. I'm doing the best I know how to do. I'm praying. I'm seeking God. I'm fasting, I'm fasting meals. I'm doing whatever I can do to help God to get my mind right. I want my mind right. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet with me.